This is where we are supposed to be spending our night, at the Bureau of Land Management on the Deschutes River. However, authorized people only, violators subject to tribal law. That's kind of scary. So here we are, it's a Sunday. There's John. And he's gonna back the camper up a long, long way. We're at the Erickson Air Museum. It's a harvest host site. And man, are we glad to see it, because I dig airplanes. So that's the complete story. The Navy pilots always get the girls, don't they? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so there are 27 planes in Mr. Erickson's private collection. Butch O'Hare. Yeah. Butch Henry. It's yep. a P-38. Okay. It's a unique and awesome airplane from World War II. One of my favorites. P-51's my other favorite, but that's pretty much everyone's favorite. But uh, their P-51 is out on loan right now to a museum in Tennessee, I believe. But this is a treat, getting this close to one of these. Um, obviously, you can see quite clearly, it has two engines, and that gave it quite an advantage. I know the enemies feared and hated these planes. They were extremely effective at shooting down they were in the business of killing Nazis, and business was a booming. <laughs> cool. Okay. It's a Messerschmitt ME-109, which was the staple of the German Air Force, and that was a deadly plane that uh, was very effective and uh, it, it was effective in thwarting the attacks on Germany, the, the raids, the bombing raids, until the P-51 Mustangs got outfitted with exterior tanks that they would drop which gave them extended range so that the Mustangs could fight against these very planes and the Mustangs proved to be more than worthy opponents. So this is a 28-cylinder radial air-cooled corn cob design engine. It has four rows of seven cylinders each. And it's just packed in there. It's amazing. It's like here is a, a, a you know, under this cooling portion is a is a piston, obviously. And then under here, slightly rotated up, is another one. This one's in the same row, so this is one of the seven. Here's one, two, three. But then, if this is one and two, then this is one of the next row, and then one of the following row is canted that much more. And how intricate, I mean, over here is the plane it came out of. It's a Pratt & Whitney Wasp Major. Jeff, Jeff's gonna really like that. Somewhere over here is the plane that it came out of, right here. That's what it came out of. That's a good looking plane. Just kidding there. That looks like a flying turd. But the engine was cool. That's the propeller off of that flying turd. Hey, Amy. Looking good over there. How do you like this place? I mean, this is my kind of cool. place. This is your kind of place. But I'm sure you're just all excited. I am. Yeah. Yes. I'm so glad and we so came. I'm so glad you're excited. Yes. You should see his little face. He looks like a little boy. Do you see it? There it is. <laughs> Turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> Here's more on this P-38 since I can get in here. Exhaust. Why is this one so special? John? Uh, it's unique. And I mean, come over here with me. Where are you? 
In, inside, basically. Come, come right under here. Powerful engine and exhaust. And it's On that very, side. It's very sleek and smell. It's so small. You know, it's it's not a huge target. This this thing. Oh. Then there's another one over here. The same. Extremely powerful engine and exhaust. And tail fin. They incorporated the tail. The vertical stabilizers tied them together with this. It's got. And those little have like flappy things on them, so it helps it. It's yeah. So small. The cockpit area. Is, relative to the other planes yeah. that so are now here. So now if you shoot at this thing and you shoot in the air, you obviously missed, right? Yeah. This whole area you missed. You got to hit. There. Oh, so it's a small, a small target. Target. To try and hit and, the hit the, the pilot. Yeah, and yet it was super maneuverable. And I think it could linger. So this did what the A-10 Warthog, which is another favorite of mine. I think this lingered over the battlefields and could provide air support early. And where would the bombs drop from? These, this was these not, things? This was or did not it a bombing plane? Then what did it do? This is a okay, it's a um, attack aircraft. So it attacks ground troops. So are there guns and stuff yeah, somewhere? See, I'll show you the guns in a minute. Okay. So attack ground troops. It also was a, a fighter plane, so it was an AF and it would shoot down other fighter planes, like that Messerschmitt over there. Like so that's it, Messerschmitt, and yeah. It had long range because it could hold a lot of fuel. And was and it, it was lightweight? Fast and it was powerful. Are we it's, going to crawl it's, underneath it's, here? It's oh goodness. I'm not place. going to bonk mine head. Oh, there's engine -y things. Oh, those look confusing. And this is called the tangerine. Okay, look at this. Oh, there's the guns. I'm going to take this right up there. Ooh, oh, I almost hit my head. Okay, so you can see there's different sizes. This one here, that looks to be about three quarters inch diameter. 750. And that's more like half inch or less. This, this actually could be even like seven eighths. Or, that, those are big. That's a cannon, <laughs> a small cannon and, and, and machine guns. And a lot coming at you all at once. How do you get in thump, one? Thump, thump, You climb in. How did the, the pilot would climb in there? Would there be just one person in there? There's just one pilot in one there. One pilot. And stand by the propellers to show them how big they are. Yeah, they're pretty big. Do you have electric start? <laughs> you had, this was a pedal plane. You had to sit in there. Uh, pedal no, but you had, did you have to go broom to pull it down? I have no idea if you needed a broom to do it or no, not. No, you know, you grab and go, no. <laughs> okay, bye plane. So they take off in this plane and they fly slow and high and for a long time they could be airborne. They'd fly around the ocean and they'd look and look and look and search and search and search and finally they'd see the enemy's aircraft, uh, aircraft carriers and the enemy's warships and they'd call and say, hey, the enemy's over here, come and kill them. And, and they'd radio back, here's where they are. And then they'd go hide. Because where would they hide? Well, the, they were sitting ducks to the zeros oh. and things. So, but they could stay up in the air a long stay, time. They'd get out of the way because they don't want to be clogging up the flight decks either. The other thing is they could land in the ocean. Ah, oh. land down there. Could they take off from the ocean? They could take off. Well, yeah, it's no good to land in the ocean if you can't take off. Well, from that's the ocean true. As well. Oh, it's a and cool plane. Would fighty dudes sit in that bubbly thing? That's to help them look out for enemy enemy aircraft and enemy oh. ships. They could look down and look around. Pointed at your face. Because Amy likes talking to these planes. <laughs> so I'm going to take her to one she can talk to. Before we leave you all, this is a great place. There's lots of planes in here. And they're not very plain planes, they're fancy planes. There are. We're going to sneak out this door here. But before we go, Amy, yes. you could turn and say, Bye, plane! All right. And it's you got, a bye plane. It is. Here's what happens with BLM sometimes, okay? We've got some trash. Um, and what we're gonna do is pick this up, take it with us. It's gonna take us three minutes to pick up this little bit of trash. It's not like it's nasty trash, it's just unnecessary. Um, 
But we are near Bend, near Redmond actually, Oregon, just north of Bend. Um, this BLM spot is owned by, is used by uh, military. National Guard uh, does training out here. It's a huge area way back. We're not very far from the road. We're just back far enough. Just as we got here, a guy was leaving this spot and we thought, you know, why not just take that one? It's easy to get back out this way. He went, he went that way, which led him down a two track and it sounded like he bottomed out. We're not going to do that. They're here. They were all brand new when we left Grand Rapids about 3,000 miles ago. And this is the left rear, and that's good. The reason it looks good is because I rotated it this morning. And I don't know if you can tell the uneven wear. That's the tire that was on the left rear. I don't know if my axle's a little bit bent back there. But what I did is I took it off the rear and put it on the front. And then I'm going to watch the wear on that tire. And hopefully save this tire for a little longer. Then what I did yesterday is I called and went to Costco and bought two new tires. Hello and welcome to Camper Cooking with John. Here is what we're having tonight. Potatoes. And what I did is bought these. Okay, they're good. They're easy. Just makes life a little easier sometimes. Then outside, I've got my little grill. I bought this based on size and weight. It fits perfectly in here okay and I put everything I need for the grill including a fire extinguisher in there and what I'm cooking tonight those are alpaca chops and they feel so soft and tender um, and here I have a summer squash yellow squash that I sliced lengthwise, you can see that, and I put salt, pepper, and curry on it. I love curry. Problems or difficulties of being on the road is not having access to everything that is normal in your life. And Amy has been feeling under the weather since we started this trip. I don't know if everyone knows, but she had um, surgery gallbladder removal just before we left one week to the day before we left and she was having difficulties up to that point um, and we thought the gallbladder uh, re removal would solve all of her problems and it didn't um, 
So she's been lethargic, rather lethargic on our trip. She's lost weight. She's um, about 15 pounds under her normal weight. And she's usually really steady with her weight. Um, Amy is super high energy gal and she just has been rather lethargic and, and worn out. Anyway, so we're finally in Bend, Oregon, thank goodness. Um, after going through the national parks and being kind of in the middle of nowhere, we're at a, a real town. Um, and we went to a really good urgent care facility and they did x-rays. Um, gave her an EKG, there were some things that gave them indications that there might be a problem. Um, so they did a blood test as well, and we got the results of the blood test a few moments ago, and I don't know what it's called, but there's something that's, the number's supposed to be in the 400s, and hers is 5,000, so we're at the emergency right now, and they're going to do a CAT scan for her to see if she potentially has a clot in her lung. And uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, she's in pretty good spirits. What can I do? We just want to get to the bottom of it. She it wants to feel to better. Breathe. It hurts to breathe, yeah. All the time. Ugh, some vacation. But after hiking, all we did. Yeah. <laughs> if I have a blood clot in my lung. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we didn't do the 20 mile hike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, bye. All right, we're leaving. It's not, yeah, yeah it's not a blood clot. It's pericarditis. It's pericarditis. Which is fluid around the heart sac. Yeah, it's like a pleurisy kind of thing around my heart sac. Yes. Oregani. So, okay, here's what's going on. Uh, well, first let me tell you, Ben. Nice place. Nice people. We're actually staying in Redmond, mm -hmm. north of Bend. I performed last night at the Moose Lodge, and the reason we went I to a lot of breweries. We did go to a lot of breweries, and every one we went to was great. Super yummy. And it's beautiful. the The scenery is fantastic. They call this the High Desert. Today we went and toured a, a cave system close to here. We just took a couple lights, went in, went through. It's not that far. I'm a little claustrophobic, felt a little at times, but yeah, however that is. But you know what? It was pretty cool. Last night I gigged at the Moose Lodge. It was wonderful. The people at the Moose Lodge were so nice and so generous, and it was a great time. It was a lot of fun. The reason I did it alone, though, was because Amy is still feeling under the weather. And, and when I say under the weather, I mean she's not good at all so she has no energy she doesn't want to be on camera tonight so we've made a decision today <clears throat> we're gonna come home we're gonna go home to Grand Rapids we're gonna fly out of here we're driving 500 more miles south over the next three days to get to Stockton Stockton California where Allegiant flies from Stockton we're gonna fly to Vegas from Vegas we're gonna fly back to Grand Rapids we're going to spend as long as it takes in Grand Rapids until Amy feels well enough to continue the trip. If she doesn't feel well enough to continue after a month, we're just going to cancel it. I'm going to fly out and bring the trailer home. I think she's going to feel fine in a few weeks. She needs to relax. She needs to de-stress. She needs the care of her doctor, which she doesn't have out here on the trip, and that's one of the problems of being on a trip. We're fortunate that we're in a situation where we can do this. If we were in Europe right now, we'd be in a whole nother bunch of problems. Clinker Brick Winery. Okay. So, hi, here we are. So, what is, is your name? Jamie. What is your quest? No. What is your quest? Seek the grail. Um, so, how did you become the wine tasting manager? 
So I went to school for wine business at Sonoma State. I want to be as in wine tasting. That's my new career. Shut up, John. And then I started working in a tasting room while I was in, still in college. And so I've worked in a number of different places and I've been in the industry almost 10 years now. But you love cheese. I do love cheese. The last wine area I worked at, we, they did a wine and cheese pairing and that was one of my responsibilities was doing the wine and cheese pairing and okay. it was a blast. In Michigan, they have a thing in November and they call it the wine and macaroni and cheese fest. Oh my God. <laughs> and people go to different wineries and they make different and different like restaurants like pair with, cheese with lobster. Oh. Oh. Tiramisu oh. mac and cheese. <laughs> Take a break. Make some really good reds. Oh, yummy. We're really having fun. So, we are having fun today. We're here tonight. We're here tomorrow. Then we head home. Amy's going to walk outside, take a little video footage of that area. It's so cool. When we come back, we're going to spend a couple days here at least and see some of these other wineries. Because this is kind of right in our... Real house. Real house, yeah. Real house. Yes. Oh, this is their tasting room. And I'm not really allowed to drink wine right now. I did do the tasting. It was so good. And friends of mine who love red wine and white wine, I wish you were here with me tasting wine. Carla, Connie, Theta, Deb. Oh, to mention just a few. Gosh. And it's sunny and it's warm and we're not cold. We are in sunny California, finally. And I'm not gonna show you what I look like because, oh, and Becky, I'm sorry I didn't mention you right there in those other ladies' names, but forgive me. So this is where we get to hang out. And our little camper, our little gypsy. So we're leaving. Kind of sad. It's kind of bittersweet, <laughs> yeah. It's going to be great to see the grandkids. Yes. But we're packing up. We're heading home for a little bit. We're posting two videos today um, so we can be a little bit ahead. And then we'll get back on it when we hit the road again. But we got to get home for Amy for a peace of mind, if nothing else, mm -hmm. to deal with what's going on with her so she can feel comfortable and see our own doctors. Yep. And Sometimes you just got to go home. Yep. Sometimes you gotta go home. And just like that, we're on our way home.